We are live. My Hi. phone just told me. Oh, hello. hello. And hello, and hello, and hello, and hello. We are hello. surrounded by cameras here in the uh, CBC Broadcasting Center. I'm here with Aurora Brown, Jennifer Whalen. Of course, you know them as part of Baroness Von Sketch, award-winning yeah. once again. How many did you rack up last night? Uh, it, it, was, uh, it was Wednesday. We Four, four. four awards. Yeah. yeah, nominated for five, won four. So yeah. that's very exciting. We're doing pretty. We have an A. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we and the one we lost, we you know we are, for, for our DOP, he wins in our hearts. Yes. So. yes. Awesome. Yes. So we are taking your questions out there in social media land. We are uh, streaming on Twitter. We are on YouTube. We're on Facebook. We are reading your comments. We want to hear from you. Just as those questions start coming in, I'm Eli Glasner. I don't know if I said that. Not important, but I'm Eli. Hi, how are you? Oh, thank you. See, I feel, I feel validated. This is great. This is all for me, really. Um, I want to start, I mean, the show has been so successful, but I mean, last night, like, how did, how did that feel? To another four trophies. It's hugely yeah. exciting. Yeah. Like, it's, it's great. There's so much talent here. Um, and it's, uh, you know, so it's amazing to be recognized. The field of peers is amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But also just, I think everybody dreams about, um, you know, doing work that people like. Yeah. You know, yeah. so it's just, yeah. it's like, uh, that's fantastic. And then like after the explosion of the first season, I guess that pressure to try and keep it going, right? Like the proof, <laughs> it's not a fluke and we can actually go higher, right? Yeah. Yeah, although it's funny to hear you describe it as an explosion because we always like we're just working in a, in a yeah. room yeah. somewhere. So it, so it's like oh yeah, I guess. But it's yeah. I mean it's it's. Um, but the thing is like I don't know that we feel pressure so much, but like when we know like oh good people like it, we're gonna keep going. Like there's mm -hmm. a bit of freedom. It's like okay, we get to keep going and and try out maybe this new aspect right. of things and this right. aspect of mm -hmm. things and. And it feels great to be supported by people. We get mm -hmm. a lot of very, you know, like on Facebook and stuff, we, yeah. we have a lot of very immediate feedback from people. And, um, and as Jen says, it's a wonderful thing to have people love something that you're making. So it's, it's fun to be able to, like, keep trying. You know, like, even mm -hmm. that is so rare in mm -hmm. television. Like, I want to ask you about kind of the arc of the show and how you're trying to raise that bar and challenge yourself more. But I want to get to the questions okay. first because we got a ton of them already. Uh, we have Tammy on Facebook who is saying... The comedy from the female perspective is so overdue and welcome. Are you aware of how funny and significant this show really is to your fans? Well, heavy, sometimes. Heavy. Yeah. sometimes. Yeah, yeah. I, I can say, like, for myself, um, when this show came along, I, I w was trying to develop other shows with mm -hmm. female voices because I just really felt like I just didn't see women on television the way that I knew them to be. Mm -hmm. So yeah. for me, it was a huge. It was just. I felt there was a big hole in the marketplace. So when this came along, I was like, yes, this brings together a whole bunch of You were at this hour is 22 minutes? I did this hour is 22 minutes, and then I was in development mm -hmm. uh, at that time um, with Alana Harkin, who's just gone on to do uh, mm -hmm. Samantha Bee's show. And we were trying to do um, a show about women. And uh, But to leave a gig that's working and mm -hmm. to leave the security of that, to go out on your own, yeah. but that you you... You weren't satisfied. I wasn't satisfied. I, I loved 22 minutes of my mm -hmm. time there, and I learned a lot as a writer there, but I just felt like I wasn't writing in my own voice, and it got to mm. a point where I was like, I really, I think I have something to say, and mm. I wanted to do that, so I took the creative risk and uh, ate it for a couple of years. <laughs> my, my income went, <laughs> and uh, when this came along, I, think I, was, I was starting to be like, okay, what else can the cash in? Mm -hmm. um, so it, it paid off, so it was, it, you know, risk was eventually rewarded, and I, I did feel like, there was a, an audience out there who wanted to hear female yeah. voices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you find like I've said this before too, but uh, so at the risk of my p repeating myself, I, I always feel like I'm telling people the same story. No, over no, no. And over there's lots of older. people which are just That's finding true. you for the first time. So go ahead. Okay, but it's um, if you, I think one one of the the great things about our life is that we have this golden age of access to yeah. other mm -hmm. people's creativity and thoughts on the internet. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's you get to you know hear everybody's thoughts on everything and <laughs> but you know that you can kind of be you can kind of be assured that if you're like gosh I kind of like this thing or I think mm -hmm. this way about something I wonder if anybody else does and it turns out there's probably like a thousand people immediately yeah. who who feel the same way and so it it's it it's it means that you can you can connect with other people like if you pay attention like I think I want to see this so in that way of like mm. I want this kind of comedy yeah. and when we got together, we were all very much on the same page of how we wanted to look and how we yeah. wanted it to be, what we wanted to be about, and the style and the tone and how we wanted to approach it as actors and all that kind of stuff. And so, so it was kind of a, it's like I think other people will respond to this, 
you know, if you pay attention to what's true for you as a human, there's yeah. other humans who feel yeah. the same way. And so it's so gratifying to get that kind of feedback on Facebook, you know, people on Twitter, like sometimes at the Royal Winter Fair, you know, like Meredith and I <laughs> went with our kids and this couple came oh. up to us, they're like, thank you so much, we spent the whole day, you know, like it was, yeah, yeah. it's really, really nice. Sometimes it just happens when you're just out being a, a person in the world, like often we're working really mm -hmm. hard on the show mm -hmm. basically the whole year, so you forget that there's actually people yeah. even watching. Yeah. Um, but it, it's it's really nice to connect with people because like when, when a, a laugh represents something true for people, it's, it's so nice to... Yeah. You know, you're like, thank you for putting yeah. my inner self on the. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that the honesty of a laugh, yeah. right? Oh yeah, that, that's yeah. yeah, the release of it, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so now, speaking of laughs, both of you uh, worked with Second City yes. at one point or another. Yeah. So, and this is from Lynn. Uh, at what point, each of you, we could start with you. Did you think comedy was your thing? Because hmm. uh, you do other stuff also, and you've yeah, gotten, so yeah. When we think, okay, this is. That's the mountain I want to try and climb. Um, it, it took a while, actually. I think all of us had a, a similarly kind of thing. You know, I went to York University to be an actor, and we studied. Yeah. We st I have a BFA, and we studied Shakespeare and all those kinds of things. And it's very serious. They actually discourage you from doing comedy there. What? Really? Yeah, they do. They um, discourage fun, lightness. <laughs> Jen went to York as well. Yeah, I went I to I, I, uh, York University screenwriting uh, oh, really? BFA. Oh, there you go. Nice. So, oh, yeah. In yeah. fourth year, we went down the hall to like do things <laughs> with people. And so I learned a lot there, but it was, you know, it's, it's a lot of that serious kind of thing. And I'd always loved, you know, listening to comedy and grew up like listening mm -hmm. to Monty Python and watching SCTV mm -hmm. and all the other things that there are. But it wasn't until a few years later and I was really tired out and I think I'd actually stopped acting. And then I went to see a friend's improv show. She was taking improv classes in yeah. Second City. And sh so I went to see her student show. And Carolyn Taylor was actually in that show. Uh, so that's the night that I met her. Right. But I remember watching it and thinking, God, they're having fun. This doesn't look pretentious <laughs> at all. This looks really good. Yeah. And, you know, like, they were just having yeah. fun. It's yeah. not like acting class where you're crying and putting yeah. yourself up there. I mean, not that we don't cry, but... Um, acting so, and fun. What yeah, an idea. Fun. So, hey! Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I started taking the classes, and they were, like, the highlight of my week. Mm. Wow. You know, it was, like, a very poor you know, depressed time in my late eighties, yeah. in my, my late eighties, in my late twenties. <laughs> you have that Benjamin Button thing. I am backwards. actually a <laughs> hundred years old. Um, and it was just, it became this time of joy and mm -hmm. then people kept asking me to do it. So it just kind of worked out that way. Jennifer? I was always drawn to comedy, um, yeah. listened to comedy albums growing up mm -hmm. and, and loved similar things, Monty Python, all those different things. And then uh, kind of forgot about it, thought I'd be a serious actor, went to York, loathed it, dropped out, um, <laughs> was like, <laughs> And now I must find something but to do. But we love New York. Yeah, mm, I'm sure it's great. To York. We should go back and talk at York University. Oh my God, no. No, <laughs> no thank you. Go um, ahead, go on. Anyway, uh, so I uh, took Second City courses, I found Second City, and, and I was like, oh, this is my cheers. Like I'd yeah. always sort of felt like, I knew I wanted to be creative, and I didn't know exactly what it was, and I didn't want to do stand-up, and it, that wasn't even really on my radar. Mm -hmm. And I just felt like, oh, these are my people. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, just rapidly got into um, improvising and quickly got into Second City and this just kind of never looked back. I was like, oh yeah, this is where I'm meant to be. It was just like I felt like something dropped into place, mm -hmm. which was really yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You now have an amazing stable of writers that are yes. helping to work mm -hmm. on the show. So yeah. then how, what's that balance? When I watch it, it mm -hmm. feels very loose. It feels very um, real and improvised. I, I know it must be. Talk to me about finding that balance. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, I mean, we really spend a lot of time on the scripts. We do have fantastically talented writers, and a lot of them come from a Second City background, mm. or you know, definitely have strong comedy backgrounds. And and but also we've had playwrights and you know graphic novelists, and we've you know had a, a, mm -hmm. a breadth of people. But we we write the scripts, and then we do a little table read every week, and we read them out so that we can hear them out loud because that's really important. Yeah. And then we rewrite them, and then and rewrite them and rewrite them. So by the time we start, we are performing them for the camera, we've done them a, at least mm -hmm. 10 times. Mm -hmm. uh, so we generally get them to script and then we know we know the areas that we're going to improvise generally at the beginnings or the right. ends or we find something we're like oh that's good keep that mm -hmm. um, so it is a it is a mix but you have to be disciplined and we've learned our editors have told us like watch the overlap oh god the sound shoot editing. with two yeah. cameras so right. if somebody does yeah. something magic you can edit back and forth so it's it's been um, a learning process of how to accommodate what we like to do for yeah. the camera and it depends on the the scene itself yeah. too like there's mm -hmm. ones it's like this lends itself to improv yes uh you know the whole you know like the back end of this of the thing it was magic on the day and we found it kind of thing but then there's other ones like i'm thinking of like 
Well, your quirkiest, one the, the quirkiest yes. girl one. I yeah, mean, that, that one. must have been totally choreographed. Amazing, yes, yes. ridiculous, incredibly ambitious musical yeah. Yeah. that you yeah. created. And we had to like pre-tape it so that I was like lip syncing yeah. along with it. Right. And it was very, yeah. No, but that wasn't. But Mare and I improvised some of the lines off the top. Yes. Like, right. you look yeah. like a... Uh, fabric remember. store threw up on me. Yes. yes. So yeah. That's the magic <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I say a thing and then I can yeah. never remember what I said. <laughs> yeah. I usually remember what you say because it's very funny. She's really great yeah. at coming up with like, can we come up with some other endings? And she'll just like come up with, you just come up with like really amazing well, one liners and stuff. Should have said. It's a real yeah. game. Should have said. Yeah. Okay. You know, yeah. yeah. Should have said. And it's yeah. also 22 minutes where you have to uh, come up with true. a ton. Yeah. Like, yeah. We don't like these jokes, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I also think there, there are times where we, you and I, like, particularly, I'm thinking of like, um, uh, the, well, some that we shot this year that people won't even see for a few months, yes. but like you know, the, in the restaurant oh, uh, yes. that day, where like yes. it, the the style of the scene, the mm. humor of the scene is kind of the 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 rhythm of it, and also sometimes like a joke depends on those particular yeah, words, words, you know, sure, like the it's, right words it's very sure. crafted. But um, I think everybody who's on the show, all like us. Uh, all of the people that we're so lucky to have, and there's a ton of people from the sketch comedy scene mm -hmm. in Toronto, and I'm not always sure if people realize the level of acting that has to go into I making don't think things funny. Yeah. Yeah. That you can repeat things with the same freshness that makes you think they're mm -hmm. improvised, yeah. or or being able to respond in character. Like the, uh, I just want to emphasize that the sketch com comedy community in this country is extremely skilled. It's funny, when you yes, do and. your job yeah. properly, yeah. people think, people it's, think yeah. it's like, yeah. <laughs> you're just tossing it off, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. which is uh, <laughs> good and not, yeah, yeah. yeah the level of skills. Along yeah. those lines though, in terms of just like the energy on set, we have a question from Sandra Stahl who asks, I'm sure this has asked been many times, but she wants to know, uh, how in the world do you manage to get through some of your sketches without breaking or laughing, particularly as they are getting more physical? <sighs> Editing. Editing, <laughs> editing, editing. Uh -huh. uh, so the period app one yep. that we did, uh, I think that's in season three. It's hard. We're I'm, we're editing season four right now, so it's hard to remember which yeah. is in each thing. But the one where basically uh, I mistake how you use a period app, I couldn't stop laughing every I time know. I looked at it. I'd be like, uh -huh. And I turn away. Our director was actually getting quite annoyed with me because I just <laughs> I was like, we had a time crunch. And I was like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm yeah. like, no, I've got this. I've got this. So it, nope, started laughing yeah. again. So sometimes it just gets it hits you. you. It's yeah. not every sketch, but sometimes you just can't, you get the giggles yeah. and you can't stop, which mm -hmm. is fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, um, it varies. Sometimes we're just like, we're in such a, the, the days are not long. We have, we get a lot of material yeah. in not a very long day compared yeah. to most shows. And so we are like, sometimes I think we're like thoroughbred racehorses. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're just like wide-eyed and people are coming in <laughs> massaging us and making sure we're in the right place. And we're just like, okay, here we go. Yeah. We're doing yeah, yeah. it. Now run. <gasps> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But, uh, but yeah, it depends. You can never really predict, it. and uh, and you it's, just hope it doesn't ruin all like, the takes. Sure. Have you ever been on a road trip and you get punchy? Yeah. And oh, you yeah. Start, everything starts getting silly. Yeah. So it's just like that. It's like yeah. as the the we usually shoot for about ten weeks. So by week eight, you mm -hmm. start to get a little giggly, and by the last week, it's yeah. yeah. Or somebody gets. comes out with like their hair done in a funny oh, way. You didn't. Question. Now we have. Oh, there's many. Don't oh, worry. Yeah. But that's okay. I don't want to cut you off. But I have a very specific question about spaghetti sauce. Oh. So okay. this might have some connection to you or might just be random, but I'm going to ask. Okay. Peter Coleman on Facebook asks, what's your spaghetti sauce recipe? Do you cut the noodles on your plate or do you do the twirly business? Is he just a, a devotee of sauce or does this have any connection I to you? No? I, I, I okay. don't know. I Let's have just an deal with Peter's, uh, I guess. I think it's okay for children to cut. I think adults need to twirl. I think okay. they need to twirl with a spoon. There, thank yeah. you. Thank you, you settled that, Peter. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Is for a recipe? Or? I, <laughs> oh, I'm, no. I'm going to move on. Okay, okay, yeah, let's move on. Yeah. Uh, Janet Bell on Facebook asks, do you ladies do all the writing? Uh, also, they want to know who came up with the name. So talk to me about that writing process, how that works. Sure. Oh, oh, yeah. We all write on the show, but we are not the only writers right. on mm -hmm. the show. Um, as Jen mentioned, we've had a wide variety of, of writers, some with a ton of television experience, mm -hmm. some with no television experience. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had a you know, novelist, graphic novelist. Um, we generally have the four of us, plus two staff writers who for a long time were Jennifer Goodhue and Monica Heisey, and then, mm -hmm. we've had other, and then we get other people in for chunks of time. Mm -hmm. Because we want to have a you know a range of voices yeah. in the room and and it's like planning a party because for us yeah. like we're there for the entire writing period which you know for a ten week show is ten weeks plus two weeks of revisions and so it's like a marathon and, and you're in the room all all the time and you need fresh voices so it's sort of like we try to get people we know work together who have a good vibe yeah. together mm -hmm. and have different sort of you know. Um, 
permutations and combinations yeah. to make it fun for them, but also to make it fun for us. And that's partly what. Keeps As us you're super coming fresh. closer to a new season, and you yeah. know you're going to be in that room, yeah. are your antennae up? Are you looking around yes. for yes. like anything could be a bit or yeah. a thing? That's when we actually call that. We're like, oh my god, are we in? in, in is this a sketch mode? Yes. Right. <laughs> because everything is <laughs> everything is a sketch. Everything yeah. is a sketch. My text message history with Jen is periodically filled with like, oh my god, I'm at this place and this happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, I took myself out to breakfast this morning and I overheard. This guy's conversation. I'm like, is this a sketch? Is oh, yeah. This a sketch. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And so that's for real. That's a thing. But it's interesting that a lot of your comedy is, I would say, cultural and observational, but mm -hmm. not necessarily political. Mm -hmm. And we are in a very political time, yeah. very mm -hmm. divisive time. So yeah. talk to us about. Is that a choice, or is that just the comfort zone in the room? Because of the lead time, like something yeah. like 22 minutes, where you write it on a Monday and it's on air on Friday or whatever their schedule is is currently, it's basically a week. Mm. So you can you can do political stuff. We have a lead time of we generally write in the spring, and then it takes like almost a full calendar year before it comes yeah. out. So we deal with the social political more mm -hmm. than the actual right. political because you know we don't necessarily know who's going to be in power. We do know certain things. We, like we can talk about people's anxieties about the way that the world is moving, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. our anxieties about um, climate change, our anxieties about political things in a larger way. But to be specific, just because we don't have that lead, we have such a big lead time, yeah. we can't react minutely. So it's it's about the, the pace of the show. But it's also what we're really interested in yeah. mm -hmm. is the dynamics between people in living together and yeah. working together and sort of the interpersonal dynamics are really what we're interested in. And the, the social is political. Yeah. Would you say it's a small p political, Jen? I would say it's a small, small p political. Small p political as opposed I to would. a large p political. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you feel like um, there's more of that now in comedy, that we've kind of seen a bit of a, a turning point in terms of the success of your group and mm -hmm. Broad City and mm -hmm. even some of the areas that Samantha B mm -hmm. are exploring? That a decade ago we didn't see a lot of that, mm -hmm. but it seems like there's a bit of a shift going on. Mm -hmm. I guess it goes in waves. I mean, there's always going to be the topical, mm -hmm. you know, the SNL, this hour's 22 mm -hmm. minutes, that kind of stuff. And there will always be, I think there will always be stuff, you know, like there will always be absurd comedy. There will always be all those things. Um, I mean, it's funny you're talking to me like Sam B, because I really enjoy, you know, like there's the, 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 the daily stuff on Twitter, kind of mm -hmm. things that you can read. And then, you know, like Sam B taking like a more like long yes. term view and then, shows that just look, I think it's, you're always going to get a mix and we're happy to ride this wave. Right. Yeah. Helen Pace on Facebook Helen. asked, interesting question, how has doing satire uh, changed you as individuals? Ooh, I've never had that question that before. That is interesting. Hmm, I've been talking about that for <laughs> a second. The, the thinking faces changed now, they're thinking. As an individual. Because you talk about now looking, right? Yeah. Like you're going out in the world looking for what should, what's funny, what needs to be said, what yeah. stories or what's not being commented yeah. on. So I, you know. I have a lot to say about this, yeah. Helen. Yeah, actually, uh, no, yeah. You do oh, well, I, I think, I think what, because my yeah. answer's short, so I'll go first. I have a short <laughs> answer. Um, I think that for me, I always sort of had this observational thing, and this just gave me a place to put it. Mm. Yeah. You know, to put the things that I noticed and the inconsistencies that we all have as humans. Right. Yeah. You know, um, it, it gave me a, a real place to explore that and talk about it. So I think that was always there. I just didn't know what to do with it before. Yeah. No. Well, I think that it, um, because, I mean, really it dates, like, you know, being in satire kind of, mm -hmm. you know, dates back to Second City, mm -hmm. really. You know, so you, in a way that, that mode of, like, is this a sketch? Mm -hmm. You A little bit of you goes into that all the time where you're just <laughs> really aware yeah. of, like, awake to the possibility of, like, whoa, what's going on here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. In a way, what it means is that I'm more willing to put up with weirdo conversations or somebody's being rude in public <laughs> because part of it me start, like, clicks on material? record. I'm like, oh, right. give me your whole character <laughs> so I can transmit this mm -hmm. later on. Um, I think generally... So you're just a sketch comedy vampire. You're just a little like, bit. Yeah, a little yeah, bit. Yeah. I'm like, uh-huh. Oh, really? Tell me more about your viewpoint. Uh, can't wait to get, you know, <laughs> that kind of stuff. Um, I think in general, being an actor at all uh, necessarily kind of helps you have levels of empathy because you mm -hmm. have to put yourself in somebody's mm -hmm. shoes. And when you're doing sketch and you're doing that many more characters in, in the same space of time, you have to leap around from all these viewpoints. And so I think for me, it's made me realize that um, things we think are fixed about ourselves, like how we dress and how we look and where we approach things, like 
you know, it's 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 a it's a movable thing. You yeah. know, like we're all wearing personas all the time, um, and that you. So I have compassion for people, and then sometimes if I think something's really dumb, I'm like, you're an idiot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, and, and I would also say that as as I've aged too, my perspective as a younger comedian was very black and white. Yeah. And now as I'm older, it's quite different. We did a sketch that will be in our upcoming season four if it makes the show. We're still figuring yeah. about it, about these. Uh, middle-aged ladies in a yes. restaurant and I related to it so much because I had been the server at one point serving <laughs> this the middle-aged. This is the table movie? Yeah. Uh, no, this, no is a, this, this is a different one. You haven't seen it yet. Yeah, yeah, okay. But I realized I had been on both sides of it. Yeah. I have yeah. been a middle-aged lady at the restaurant who's yeah. like, this service could be a little bit. Yeah. And, and, so, and so I got to examine my own inconsistencies. Yes. That I had also yes. been at one point the waiter who's like, oh my god, these ladies. So. Yeah. yeah. We have a question from Haley uh, who Hi, Haley. talks about would you consider uh, would you consider casting older women on the show? I have noticed as the show has gone yeah. on, uh, uh, it's become more inclusive. I've seen more yeah. Yeah. body types, faces, yeah. cultures in yeah. and on screen. But mm -hmm. is that something you're aware of or thinking of exploring older actors? Uh, yes, we have actually. Yeah. We've had quite a few older yeah, actors, and, yeah. and we'll continue it. It really is about what the material is each yeah. each year, and then we cast based on. What we've yeah. what we've written, uh, so I think it'll be something that continues to evolve and, and stuff. But absolutely, yeah. there's a lot of fantastic uh, actors and actresses yeah. in this in this city, and, and look, like ageism is a thing. Yeah, you know. So obviously, we'd love to work, let people work and do what they do. Yeah. Um, some of the people that we've had, like when you're talking to them and they talk about their careers, you're just like, what? It's like, yeah, I started singing in the Catskills, and then I did this. Oh like, yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. So I actually love it when we have older people on set because I I'm just like, I yeah, a little bit more. Yeah. So are you saying that we are not the older actors? Is that what you're saying? We kind of like it's like are we oh, the I'll older actors that. at this point? <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're, the young, like the, you're the young. Yeah, we're at yeah. the age where you can like news. relate to everybody. So yeah. that's good. Yeah. Uh, Mandy Moo uh, Forrest on Facebook. Hi, Mandy Moo. Hi. Um, she wants to know if you're going to be touring. She would love to see you. Ah. That's it. Because there is, of course, yes, many others. Kids in the Hall, yes, etc. Yeah. Have done this. I could yeah. see you have certain characters you could bring back. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Are you? Looks like you're. Cons yeah, well, maybe? we get asked this a lot. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and we would love to do this. Is the short answer. <laughs> the longer answer is our schedule is so packed in, in making the show. Yeah. It's difficult. Yeah. But I would say, um, Mandy Boo Forrest, we would love to do that. Yes. And I hope at some point that we are able to do that. And we will let you know if we do. Yes. Um, but I think that at some point, that will happen. I just don't mm -hmm. know. She yeah. also mentioned that she's British and she loved your British cops routine with a million <laughs> cups too. of tea. Oh, amazing! Thank Good. You. That oh, was based on God. me binge watching Happy Valley. Yes. Oh, really? And <laughs> I you looked so much like her. It was so That's satisfying. How good our like, hair and makeup team is because I yeah, I didn't think I could. Oh no, it was, it was like, amazing oh. how much, especially with all that eyeliner kind of thing. It was oh, so yeah. it was very satisfying. Thank you, Mandy. Thank you, Mandy. Yeah. yeah, that was based on my deep love of Sarah Lancashire. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. Aurora, my intrepid researcher told me that you do ASMR, is that I do. Correct? Oh, do they listen to that podcast? Yeah, yeah. Um, I actually, in real life, I have an alternate uh, persona who has ASMR videos online. And uh, I'm not going to tell you what it is. Um, but I do... You don't have to tell me, but I want you to, like, talk into the mic for, like, okay. oh, just, give oh. me a, just give me a little taste. Yeah, give, sure. Uh, what should I talk about? What would you like me to talk about? I, I would. I don't, I'm not. This is not my field. <laughs> so I, any, any, I, any subject. What do you, I would like you and your ASMR voice to describe your, um, your leggings. Sure. I'll just bring them up here so they can be really. Hi. Um, so today I'm going to talk about um, how you can make yourself feel a little bit warmer and um, a little bit more comforted throughout your day by something really easy. They're called leg warmers. And as you can see here, I just have a simple pair. I'll just, uh, and I'll just lean down and have the, the sound. Oh, no, she's doing that. <laughs> How is that not made it into the show yet? We, we've, we've tried. tried yeah. And then I think we saw it, it. It was, I can't remember. No, it was on another show. And then we, somebody else. Oh, I can't remember. Sorry, I keep my middle aged brain. Yeah, yeah. But we did see another. We were going to do it, and then we saw something very similar that someone else had done, so we backed off of it. Yeah. But the other thing Aurora does, if you should ask her to do for you, is her gentle touch. Oh. I oh, think yeah. you got a business. So I should just explain for those who don't know, ASMR is now a, a thing. It's so mm -hmm. a thing. Uh, mm -hmm. People yeah. subscribe to those videos yeah. and enjoy that sound. Yeah. And, and if you if you don't know, it stands for auto sensory meridian response, and it's uh, you either have it or you don't. It's like cilantro. You love it yeah. or you hate it. <laughs> um, and it's the uh, reaction you get to either somebody talking, like I was just talking, but some people do uh, it's uh, visual cues, mm -hmm. and you get this. Some people get like a tingly feeling all down their spine. I personally get a heavy, sleepy feeling in my chest, and it's something I've had since childhood. It started with like right. watching like 
you know, like romper room, mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. would have like the sound of like cups or like cr construction paper being. I things. have that, yeah. but very specifically, I only have it with Dr. Phil. Oh. There's something about Dr. Phil that once I hear his voice, I only. Oh. <laughs> and I have the <laughs> best naps. I couldn't. I've never actually watched an episode. Cause I'm that is so specific. It's, it's just Dr. Phil, though. Nobody else does yeah. that to me. Yeah. Uh, Don wants to know how the Janine Gruffalo cameo came about. Ooh. Well, it's quite a thing. Um, uh, we, of course, are all fans of Jeannie Garofalo. Yeah. And uh, it's weird because uh, a friend of ours, Carly Street, who's a Toronto actress, and she's amazing, and uh, she, uh, she's a friend of mine, and uh, she was doing a play in New York uh, with Jeannie Garofalo. Mm. And so what Jeannie told us is that she had said to her, like, oh, you should check out the show. So Jeannie started watching it. And then we, we didn't know that at the time, but then she came to Toronto for. Uh, just for laughs, I Just think. for laughs. Mm. And we were getting messages from people going, So Janine Garofalo gave you like a huge shout out from stage last night. We're like, Really? And then Monica Heise, one of our writers, yeah. was doing a workshop with her, and Janine was going on about the show. And, and I think Becky Johnson, maybe, or yeah. Monica was probably like, You should get in touch with them because they'd probably love to have you on it. And so we heard that. So I don't know exactly how Age of yeah. People blah, blah, blah. Yeah. made it work, but yeah. we were like, We had the intro, and yeah, yeah. she's. Lovely. She's lovely. It was so much fun. She to have came. Her. She was amazing. She was so. She was so. Nice. We've all, we've had wonderful guests yeah. the whole way through, and it was just like I can't believe I'm in the room with this person. Here she yeah. is, and she was you know so well prepared, and she was great at improv. She's and she was actor lovely. And yeah. So funny. She's and great. tiny. And that, I mean, that's a good example of how the show really is growing mm -hmm. and, yeah. and getting more mm -hmm. attention and more more talent for season three. Did you have like? I guess goals when you went in there in terms of there's certain things that maybe we weren't ready to do that we want to go bigger or yeah. more yeah. ambitions. Yeah, I think I think part of it is like the genre pieces that we did. Like I think it was the second season we did that Mad Max thing and we loved it so much. Mm -hmm. So great. It was so much fun to yeah. do that. That really inspired us to to try to mm -hmm. have in, in every episode a yeah. bigger, more ambitious piece. So we always do uh, do smaller things, but yeah, we definitely have gotten more ambitious and and. Um, sort of the cop stuff that happened in season three was because we did this little blackout called Mom Crimes where mm -hmm. basically I'm a mom and I t go to lick blood off the murder victim's mm -hmm. face and we just had so much fun. It was just like a 30 second thing. We had so much fun doing that we were like, in season three, we were like, let's write more cops. Yeah. That's yeah. really yeah. fun to do. Yeah. So it grows out of that. Sometimes you just find a little thing and you're like, oh, let's bring those people back. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's yeah. a lot of uh, there's a lot of power in in comedy because generally the people doing it are the people writing it or mm -hmm. you know, and so there was a lot of like, what do I want to do? It's yeah. like I'm never gonna get cast in an action movie, so I will ca I will write that scene <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and I beat up Jen and have a lot of fun that doing it. So it was fun. so much fun. That yeah. was so much fun. It was I a remember, great day. Yeah, the stunt coordinator was like, that was a great blood spit take, and I was yes. like, thank you. I it wanted to nail that. I've watched a lot but of. But the great films, thing so. with how you explore. Or with some of those, the cop roles, the action yeah, roles, yeah. is you're, you're taking on or deconstructing mm -hmm. or mocking those traditional uh, roles of toughness, of yeah. manliness and whatnot, mm -hmm. and yeah. then, yeah. Yeah, yeah. like I, Dinks. Oh, Dinks but, was so much fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. that was just a, a period of time I just felt like every cop show I was watching, because I love cop shows, uh, there was this like a gratuitous, let's go to the strip club. There's right. probably not a clue there, but there might be, so let's right. just go. <laughs> and I just thought, and also The Sopranos, The Bada Bing Club, yeah. it just always made me laugh that something would happen the strippers would be like in the background, like, oh no, no heads, no so actual sad. heads. Yeah. Yeah. And it just was like, it killed me. But then, and I just, uh, my husband and I were joking ar around uh, about it because we've had an, a, a long time ongoing joke about what if there was a Hooters for men called mm -hmm. Man Pants. So, anyway, it was a, a beautiful, <laughs> my husband's also a comedy writer and very funny. So, we'd been joking around about this, and, and then I thought, let's just do it, let's just do a genre piece from, yeah. and, and just following that to its logical conclusion. And the thing that makes me laugh about that piece is there really aren't jokes in it. It just is like not at all. If you've yeah. seen this enough. Right. Yeah. Right. You'll yeah. You'll, you'll but it's having the confidence, I guess, and, and you get that in yeah. the writer's mm -hmm. room of going, you know what? It's this night might not be like a rib splitting laugh. Yeah. But mm -hmm. it's just for that different. We know kind of that tone. everyone will know yeah. what it is. Yeah, yeah. Right. Like, yeah. Yeah. I remember actually that day, I can't remember if I told you this, but the women who were the uh, the background artists, yeah. like I was chatting them a little bit outside and they're like so who's the stripper? And I was like, oh, actually, those guys are going to be the strippers. And they were like, really? They were so pleased to be yes. in the show where yes. like the men, the, the men were, or the women were not being the strippers again, yeah. you know, kind of thing. So Donna has asked. I'm sure you've answered this many times, but it's important. How did the four come together? What's what's the oh, origin long story? Time ago. ago. <laughs> uh, uh, well, the uh, Carolyn and Jennifer and I 
had all, as we mentioned before, mm -hmm. we'd all uh, spent time at Second City. Uh, Jen, uh, uh, actually the first show that I saw at Second City was um, with Fresh Smell. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I remember the whole improv set, too, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, oh. I remember, anyway, I'll tell you later. Um, okay. <laughs> Uh, I can weirdly remember really specific lines, but like because the first time I saw the uh, the 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 Monday night show that Bruce used to run, yes. I remember what oh, you did, you yes, know, yes, yes. Wallace Sound. Yeah. Uh, so Jen was already in the Second City mm -hmm. uh, machine, and mm -hmm. then I had met Carolyn Taylor with a friend, and then she and I got hired in the touring company at the same time. So that was the beginning of all, all things. So then those two went off, and they did. Uh, at different times, uh, um, uh, this hour's twenty two minutes. Carolyn mm -hmm. and I went and did Carolyn. Yes. yes. And in the me uh, meanwhile, over in England, Meredith, who'd grown up in the Maritimes, she'd gone over to RADA to go to school, and she was doing sketch over there kind of oh, thing. Wow. And she'd been there for ages. Uh, and then her life led her back to Canada, and she started doing this hour's 22 minutes. So uh, Carolyn was working on it that season. So they met, mm -hmm. and that idea started coming up there. And then Carolyn was like, I've met this woman, you mm -hmm. guys. Should. And so, so we kind of came in, and the four of us. Yeah. And we all just had, as I was saying, like a similar desire to, to the, yeah. just do it for ourselves, but then do it on, you know, it's like, yes. how did you know it was going to work? Like, did you write one sketch and film it, okay, this works, or how much of that, le of a leap of faith was that? Well, we wrote, uh, we wrote a bunch of sketches and we filmed them as a demo reel. Our, mm -hmm. our production company, Frantic, gave us some money and we did it. And we didn't actually, like, Carolyn, Aurora, and I had performed together some, but Meredith, we'd never performed together. Yeah. I, you know, and it's weird. It's almost like a dream when you think back on it. Um, I can't believe how much confidence we had. In we a just, way. we just kind of knew there was yeah. something about it that the the four of us were greater than the sum of our parts. So there, yeah. And there is actually still to this day, like when we haven't seen each other for a while, when we get mm -hmm. back in a room together, like there's a like, oh, yeah. There is something weirdly magical about the four of us together that I, I cannot explain. But once we started filming, I just knew I was like, people said, oh well, you know this that, and I was like, I'm not gonna say anything. I don't wanna jinx it, but I think this is gonna go. Yeah. But there's you nothing. Know? There still isn't. But there was nothing like that. Yes. In the Here. world of comedy. Yeah. Or in the Canadian world of comedy, yeah. I guess I should say. But um, but but that's the thing. Like there'd been a ton. Like there there are. A lot of women in sketch comedy you know on stage mm -hmm. in in the live thing here and we've been working you know with so, so many of them for so long mm -hmm. um, but yeah there was this weird level of confidence I, I think that nobody um, quite estimated exactly how much clarity of purpose mm -hmm. we'd all been going through like some Poverty stricken times in our lives, yeah. too. Because, you know, like the life yeah. of a sketch improv artist is not rolling in dough. No, really. No, yeah. no. You don't like a lot. There's not a lot of millionaires yeah. on the, like, the Forbes list. Improvisers are not. Yeah. And so we were all like, yes, let's do this. And, you know, we all had a lot of experience. And so mm -hmm. we just all had this, like, this drive that kind of clicked quietly into place. Yeah. And it's mm -hmm. like, this is going to work. And you, I guess one thing is you not only work on your skills as you get older, but you, you, your, your eye gets a little better. It's like, this has legs, you know, yeah. and and I think Carolyn, like you know, she really was. She puts a, together a good she, party. She puts together a good party, and I think that yeah. she saw like something in all of this and a skill set that like this is going to be a good, mm -hmm. yeah. a good team. Yeah, yeah. That, that that vision there. Do you think um, being a Canadian comedy group at this point is is it actually help you? Is there that Canada cool factor? Is it a hindrance or is it just? Neutral. I love that point. Canada Cool Factor is now a thing that we <laughs> yeah. say yeah. unabashedly. I'm like, yeah. yes, Canada Cool yeah. Factor. Um, yeah, I think it's great. Canada's having a moment. Yeah. yeah. I think it, I love to be part of it. And also, I think Canadian comedy is having a moment. Yeah. I mean, you mm. look at Schitt's Creek and Working Moms, yeah. uh, you know, Letter Kenny, um, Kim's Convenience, all Kim's that Convenience. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. There's so much Trailer great. Boys, Trailer Park Boys, yeah. Holy moly. Yeah. There's so much great comedy that I think, you know, it is, it's this amazing groundswell. Uh, that we're very happy to be part of, and we're yeah. happy to do it. We're happy to do it here. You know, yeah. we're happy to be able to stay here, and not because there's always that brain yeah. drain of people who go down sure. to the states, yeah. and and uh, uh, which is great too. But it's it's nice to stay where there's healthcare. Mm -hmm. Karen uh, has asked, and I'll ask this for both of you, or Je Jennifer, who is your dream guest star? We'll put it out One? there now. Well, you, you can give me a top five, whatever you like. But okay. Oh God. Well, okay. So we did have a long time. Like, so uh, at, at one point, I think Vogue said that we were the hottest thing to come out of Canada since Ryan Gosling, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. And then we had some <laughs> things like, can we get Ryan Gosling on oh. the show? Yeah. And so I have a sketch. It's called uh, Middle Aged Woman Cuddle Pile, <laughs> starring Ryan Gosling. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that would be very exciting. Um, I would love to work with. Anybody who is involved in Spinal Tap, uh, that whole right. yeah. world. Mm -hmm. uh, Catherine O'Hara, I mm -hmm. think, is a genius person. Um, there's so much talent. Yeah, I feel like 
tomorrow night at 3 a.m. I'll wake up and go. <gasps> yeah, right. that's, that's like, the perfect answer. It's yeah. like going to the grocery store without your list because it's, right. it's like there, yeah. there's there's so many people. Um, we did at one point we were saying like, can Maria Bamford come on the show? You know, because she's amazing. It's like she's somebody mm -hmm. I'd love to have. I'd also love to have like Tilda Swinton just walk through a sketch. You know, oh, yeah. like oh. wouldn't that be amazing? <laughs> we joke about Meryl Streep. We're like, yeah, can right. Streep come and be in. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that would be. Yeah, yeah that'd be quite. And then there's like there's a. You know, there's a zillion mm -hmm. incredible people. It, 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 there's always like a fun moment where we're like, it's like, what it's, might we do? Could we have this person? And yeah, then, yeah. Listen, if you're a if you're a celebrity who'd like to be on our show, just get in touch with <laughs> us. Just get in touch. How with did you and uh, Reggie connect? Uh, through Twitter, actually. Yeah, yeah. That was totally. I don't know how he saw the show, but he did and started tweeting about it. Mm -hmm. And then we were like, oh my god, he's tweeting. And then mm -hmm. um, the same magical people who made the Janine Garofalo thing right. happened. Yeah. Reached out. Leah and Delaria, that, yeah. yeah. He's lovely. Yes. Like he's just one of those people that you sit down with him for five minutes. You're like, oh, Reggie and I've been friends for 20 yeah. years. And mm -hmm. I'm like, oh no, it probably has that effect on everyone. But he's he was great. That was oh, a yeah. fun day. Yeah, yeah. It felt like playing with the friend that like with yes. the people that we knew. Like yeah, that's like, how. Ah, yeah. you were one of my people. Yeah. You speak my language yeah. similar to the. Cheers thing with Second City was like, oh, we are cut similarly from the same weird cloth. Yeah. yeah. Do you ever worry about kind of getting cast as the same kind of characters again and, uh, and again because you are good at certain kind of things? Like I'm looking to you or yeah. I, I can, you're, you do loopy kind of out there <laughs> women very nicely. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's nice to hear. Um, uh, but I, I wonder if that's a thing where you start thinking, okay, I don't want to just be doing that or I want to be able to take on one of the roles that they might throw to Meredith or something like that. Oh, yeah, I think that we all do a thing, um, we all kind of, sometimes we'll like sit down and go like, okay, let's look at all the roles we've written, you know, like, can we, does anybody mm -hmm. feel like there's something like, you know, you're feeling you're doing too much of this, and sometimes we'll switch around. Sometimes it's a real um, pleasure. It's like, oh, I thought I was going to do this, it's like, and then you see somebody else read it, and it's like, that's, you know, everybody's yeah. got lots of skills. I, after my son was born, I did have a string of being cast as, angry women a lot <laughs> not on not on our show but um but uh you know like pregnant right. irritated lady you know angry mother that kind of stuff and even on our show sometimes like if somebody needs to like scream or take somebody yes. down i think um you do and also cry like cry realistically right that oh. is you. but i'm not tired of crying and yelling. no <laughs> so it's uh, but i think that's that's part of the thing like you know if we feel like oh you know what i've been doing too many of this right. like you can write yeah. yourself yeah. Something, else. something else yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, we have a question from Haley who says, uh, do you have an upcoming guest role for a middle-aged folk jazz and or country blue, uh, blues singer guitar player? Haley is auditioning for us right oh, now via okay. social okay. media. So well, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know, Haley. Maybe well, you'll maybe have to wait and future. see. Maybe yeah, we, yeah. we don't know. We yeah. don't know about future seasons. But we'll but keep, our, keep our minds open to middle that. Yes. What, were the, what were the two genres? Folk? Uh, uh, folk jazz and country blues. Folk, folk jazz, jazz and country, country okay, blues. Okay, that's a lot of territory to cover. That's yeah. good. That's, that's broad. Okay. Right. Well, I think we're going to wrap it here because we only have you for a uh, limited window, but you, we will be seeing you. Uh, in the big show yes. on Sunday. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah, we'll be there. Can you give us any tease of what to expect with the Canadian Screen Awards? I'm wearing a cape. Oh, okay. That's that's the that's worst all thing you're gonna get. Uh, <laughs> you 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 might. You might see the Red Wine Ladies. Oh. Yeah. You might see yeah. some of those. Yeah. So I think you'll see us in different permutations and combinations. Yeah. You know, as you know, awards shows are, you know, it's always a crunch to get this very fluid, so I don't want to make any promises, mm -hmm. but I, think, mm -hmm. I think that's pretty safe. I can promise that I will be wearing a cape, so that's <laughs> okay. clearly my priority for some <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for joining us. This has been great. My name is Eli Glasser. That is Aurora Brown and Jennifer Whalen. They, of course, are just part of Baroness Vaughn's sketch. I can't even list all the awards they have won recently. Recently, uh, and uh, you can uh, follow them on social media just like us. And uh, that's all for now. Thank you again for all your questions you. and Thanks, comments. Thanks, and everybody. of course, tune in at the uh, Canadian Screen Awards uh, on Sunday to see the Cape and uh, what they have yeah. in store. It's just, the cape. Cape. just the Cape. Just the Cape. Cape and cape. nothing else. The Cape. That's, that's just yeah. literally just wearing a Cape and nothing else. It's going to be extraordinary. All right. That was great. We're going Thank to keep you. talking because it takes like 30 seconds to pull the plug. Sure, so yeah, I'm going right. to keep you in the sofa. Okay. For How long was that? It felt like about 10 minutes.